We're going to lead in with a couple of watches that have debuted at significant price points, sort of the entry level, the mid market, and the top of the market in the month of July. What do they all have in common? None of them are in gold, and that's an important market trend that's emerging. Now, Bell & Ross launched the BR123 and the BR126 Aero Naval. Now, these are watches priced substantially below $5,000 in the U.S. market. Steel, simple sports watches, ETA calibers. Josh and I believe that we're seeing the beginning of a shift in market demographics. Mm -hmm. As the baby boomers move out of the watch space, these are the guys who got the mechanical watch market basically off the mat in the mid-1980s. Yeah. Well, they were yuppies then, they're retirees now. If you're still playing the game, older guys, believe me, don't take offense to this. It's just the course of things. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is we see three important debuts, one from Bell & Ross, yeah. one from Piaget, Surprising. and at the top of the market, the niche manufacturer Moser. So interesting piece. Let's launch in with Bell and Ross. This has been kind of a transitional year for the company. Uh, Miss Stacy Orloff, who ran Bell and Ross North America for a while, actually departed a few months back, replaced by co-founder of the company Carlos Rosio for the North American market. Uh, the brand has been refocusing on value, and in some ways, it's been looking for a sequel to its 2005 instrument watch. The design that really changed the game for the company. They moved away from Rolex style sports watches built by Sin to watches they built themselves using that analog dashboard instrument format. Now they've been looking for a sequel, but as the watch industry has declined roughly across the board this year, uh, Bell & Ross has said, we don't necessarily need a design revolution. What we need is a watch that's right for our times. And that's where you get the 123 and the 126. I mean, could you talk a little bit about kind of the aesthetic they're going for and what they achieved with this watch? What I like about the watch is that, you know, you get a robust piece. Obviously, the price point's fantastic. From my standpoint, that's what I'm always looking at first, unfortunately, so I have to. Um, but you're getting uh, a dynamic piece. Um, that The blue that they put on there is, I mean, I'm partial to that. And it's the bezel, the dial, the gold accents. You're getting a huge value, in my opinion, based on the price point and that dynamic nature of that watch. I also see a little bit of a nostalgic streak developing oh, yeah. in the market. It's no secret that tribute watches are huge right now, but this is truly nostalgia entering the market at the entry level. These watches are priced at 2,900 and 3,800 euro respectively for the 123 and the 126 chronograph. And the vintage line from Bell & Ross is about as far as you can get from the instrument series. These are round cases, mm -hmm. these are tapered lugs, these are pump pushers in the case of the chronograph. And I really feel that there is a little bit of a conservatism in addition to an appeal to a younger buyer. And that's a bizarre kind of duality. But yeah. you do see younger people wearing vintage watches now on NATOs. You see guys who were never alive in the 60s heyday of the dive watch bidding on vintage Longines, Tudor, uh, in some cases, even older Bulova and Hamilton dive watches from the 60s. Yeah. I think Bell & Ross is creating a watch that's accessible in that kind of price range. Yep. The new watch that's an alternative to a vintage watch, and the steel watch that's obviously the alternative to the precious metal watch.